everybody I'm Mug671 welcome to my channel uh, so this is it first time on the River Thames filming me actually fishing rather than filming all my free fishing park and good access spots so uh, I've promised quite a lot over the years so here we go I put my money where my mouth is as they say uh, it was a really hot day really hot summer this summer 2024 went the hottest day of the year believe it or not 33 degrees so uh, the fishing wasn't great but the views are brilliant and if you want to learn a bit of a few tips and tricks here and there then um, carry on watching this video so fairly typical of my, me and my luck um, first day I did three days I've got three videos coming up of this maybe four uh, the first day this is the footage I nicked from the second day I will be nicking a little bit of footage like that from the second day but um, just because it won't be won't affect what happened on the first day which is today obviously um, but it will just sort of help fill in the spots a bit so I had a broken microphone lead on the main camera this one here that you're looking at now the big panoramic one so all I've got is a, it's my head cam and of course there's a bit of wind noise and stuff if you bear with it it's absolutely fine it just comes and goes so i really really hope you enjoy this well here we go can't believe it finally on the river thames five years i've got to prove my worth now haven't i put my money where my mouth is <laughs> so that's chertsey bridge there's my camera my setup i don't know if you can see much i can't really turn around that much but there you go electric motor rod out there and the rod rest my belly boat where's my controller my speed controller my bag of bits uh stick this on my head and i think we're gonna go ba -ba 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 -ba. right let's take a little look out at the so sort of damages out here because there's a lot of loonies on the thames i'm parked there by the way i have actually done a video of this spot walked upstream and downstream of here showed all the swims you know in great detail do quite a lot of videos like that well actually do a hell of a lot of videos like that um yeah i've got about 30 i think something like that now free fishing parking great access on the river thames and a couple of other spots building the sort of library up a bit as we go but uh yeah if, you, if you're interested in free fishing you know you come down from somewhere abroad or into london on holiday you know, uh, there's miles and miles of it, miles and miles and miles. So we're going to go out the river. This is the first. This is, I've been at sea a lot, but I've not done the river yet. So wish me luck. <laughs> So we'll be going up to Jersey, up to the weir. I'll speed up a bit in a minute. My prop's set really shallow because I'm going to be up at the weir in a sec. There's a big sandbar up here that is crazy. So um, I ideally I'd like to sort of look at that first, you know, check, check everything first. It's been a long time since I've been up here, so... Lots of lager bottles on the bank. Typical River Thames, people not caring. Oh, it's such a shame. And there's the Camping and Caravan Club, Chertsey Camping and Caravan Club. Stayed there a few times. Nice launch spot they've got there, but it looks like they've blocked quite a bit of access. Not too bad, still worth a go. I really ought to go and see the lock keeper as well. Um, no, I can't get out of the boat though, that's the only thing. Let me go and do that. I'm gonna say hello to the lock keeper. Be a good boy. <laughs> there we go. Right, we're at Chertsey Lock. I'm trying to find the lock keeper. Hey. Oh, no, God, no, <laughs> not in this. <laughs> okay. Just paid the lock keeper for the river license. £15 for the week. It's cheap. <laughs> 
<laughs> really, when you think about it. Lovely lady, they're all lovely. Well, most of the lock keepers are lovely, absolutely lovely. They're so helpful. And it looks like we may be off if I don't brush the rods. Yeah, all good. And again, yeah, lovely, a bit of that. Right, chaps, ladies and gentlemen, I should say. I'll explain quite a lot about this spot when I settle down. I've only got a couple of hours, so I'm a bit late today, but my back's been terrible, so I've not really been able to do much. All right, this is where it gets real shallow. Oh, of course, it's going to be very noisy as well, isn't it? <laughs> okay, let's find a bit of flow. Yeah. Wow, it's changed around here. <laughs> Crikey, there used to be a pontoon over there, on that side there. This spot just in here, this is where you catch all the big bream. Loads and loads and loads of bream. <coughs> I don't normally worry about the weir too much here, but um, also, where else, what else have we got? Along here, very deep, a really nice deep hole that goes along these moorings here. That's quite nice. There's about three swims from the Camping and Caravan Club. So that's the first one which goes to the weir. It looks like they've cleared it, absolutely, really cleared it out. <clears throat> they're almost unfishable, really. Most, most of the time they're unfishable. So they've done a little bit of work there. One swim there, there's another swim up there. It looks like a little gap there, but there's not many. But it's a very good site, it's a lovely site. Great fishing. Uh, caught most of my barbel on the edge of this sandbank just in front of me about halfway up between the, the bank and me a little bit further maybe so what I want to do I look around find where that flow is and just see the white water so it's just starting to speed up just a little bit about there so I want to bunk my anchor just out there we'll do that you have to be very wary of the channel here, sorry, the, the main flow. It comes out the weir and it hits this bank here and it causes a lot, a real lot of um, flow. Not so unsafe now with the uh, pontoon not being there, but um, when the pontoon was there, it was a real death trap, you know, when, when the water's really churning. Okay, coming up to it now. Opposite that swim, about there it is. So I probably want to go a little bit. No, this is about right. This will do nicely, I think. There we go. Let's try that. Lovely. All right, so there's my bait. <laughs> Doesn't look appetizing, does it? It's, uh, it's fresh, trout, high oil trout pellet with a little bit of crab trout pellet high oil as well. Um, I put a little bit of ground bait in, which will help break the paste up slightly, but it's mainly, I want the paste to stay on the hook. I mean, in the winter, I'd put, change the bait about three times in the day. So um, three or four times. In the summer, obviously, it melts a lot quicker. But if you want it to break down quicker in the winter, you can add a bit of ground bait, uh, like a method mix in there, that type of thing, which helps all these little particles that don't sort of melt under the hot water that you pour over the trout pellet. They stay whole, so what happens is you get this, these little bits fall off, and that creates a little crater. And that little crater is enough for a bit of water to wash around. So when it's in a ball, the paste is in a ball on your weight or around your boilie 
it's enough to just flick little bits off occasionally just having loose bits in here you know so really helps with the breakdown of the um, paste right. okay so there's my rig very very simple it's actually a running boom right just a simple clip running boom uh, I've got a shrink tube and I've also got a, a swivel clip on it my favorite type of swivel clip and then if I got that it's a little bit of pressure just to pull it out depends how hard you want to put it in really that's what she said so there's my hook it's a size 4 it is a barbed but uh, I always need well when I remember to which is 99% of the time I crush my barb down I don't like to use fully barbed hooks at all so that, now this will last me two days on a bad day maybe th in the winter it lasts me three or four days that bait and that's the amount of boilies I use for the week because what you do is just cover them in paste and they soak up the oils from this high oil paste that I'll talk about later so whenever you do paste around a weight and the bait or the bait um, always put make sure you've got a rounded bottom on the weight because that's the first thing that hits the water so you want it to be streamlined because if there's any hard edges sticking out it rips them off and then the bait then the paste actually's ripped off as well so just make sure it's nice and round and same goes for the hook you won't believe this but you know hey -o. this is what i do and it works so i can't really say any more than that and the important thing with this you can pop that in the water actually that one if you wanted to you to slowly go hard right but the most important thing here with the boily bait paste thing <laughs> is to try and keep it as clean as possible up the top if you feel like you've got too much just take a bit away because that will break it up because that's because it's the opposite um so you want a nice rounded edge near the top of the uh near the top of the um bait paste here see i'll show you oh, yes this bit needs because that's what happens is that goes in the water splosh splosh like that this goes in the water but it follows it down so the actually the front bit it goes down that way so you want this bit to be right this edge here really chilly blooming August it's supposed to be 24 25 degrees today I think it's because I'm near the weir pool you know got my legs in the water a bit obviously but not too bad but cool really chilly getting goosebumps actually what I might do oh, is get this anchor See if I can tie it somewhere where I'm going to get a bit more facing the opposite direction. So I want to face the campsite a little bit. That's a bit better, isn't it? Right, let's do a quick flippy over on that. See how that holds. That's better. A little bit better. I'm hopefully going to get to Shepparton Weir. So if you know my channel, you'll know I suffer with bad luck. <laughs> um, well, the Shepparton expedition, that went brilliantly for the first sort of half to two thirds. And then a pub decided to have a soul afternoon with loud music, soul music blaring out. So I couldn't sort of film any of that type of uh, footage because of the copyright situation, you know. I haven't edited any of it yet, haven't checked it over properly, but there is quite a bit of music on there, so it's going to be difficult to use the second half of that one, but I'll see what I can do. If not, I'll just take a trip up the river and I'll put some music over the top, but that's probably going to be my third video, I think. So um, anyway, sorry about that, that break. Um, back to the video. That's where I want to get to as well. Obviously, this was my first choice, um, but Shepton Weir, really, that's going to be my next adventure I'll, I'll probably come back here again there's a couple of spots i want to try like i said before with the deep water by the moorings there um there's the deep hole there's the hole beside the weir where the canoeists sort of get up to get onto the lock the what do they call it where they pass you know past the lock there's some steps there and just to the right of that's a nice deep hole that goes into the weir full of bream normally big bream 
right, so I'm going to give this another, what, another 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes, and see what happens. I don't like to leave it in its place too long, especially in the summer. You can cast around on the Thames. You don't have to sort of hit the mark every time. It's sometimes, especially with this method, you're not putting a lot of bait in the water. So it's nice to flick around a little bit. Cause I mean, there used to be a lot of barbel here in the 80s and 90s, early 90s. And then a lot of stuff changed. So um, they're, you know, they're very thin on the ground nowadays. And the carp as well. I mean, it wasn't that long ago, 10 years ago, uh, 15 years ago. Oh, 15 years ago, you could catch a carp chuck almost. Maybe no, 20, say 15, 20 years ago, you'd be catching a carp chuck all over the non-tidal sort of Thames up to Staines. Uh, she's sitting a lot better now. Now I've moved it across. Makes me want to recast over slightly towards the steps a bit more actually. Right, I'm going to do it. Yeah, um, I was fairly close, but it's not where I want to be. See, all the bait, all the pace has come off, which is nice. It's good in the summer because I'm recasting quite a lot. It is a bit soft, the pace. As I say, I had to freeze it, which is never a good thing, really. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to lose all this at some point if I'm not careful. All right, let's have a chunk around the weight. Push it into that middle section. Yeah, it's just a bit soft. I might actually leave it with the lid off for a bit. It's, it's the thing when you freeze stuff, it tends to, it's almost like it puts water into it from, from the air, you know? So if it is a bit soft, just round it off. Just make sure you round the paint stuff. You don't have any big, hard, sort of jutting out pieces, you know? Because like I said, when you cast, when it hits the water, it breaks those pieces off. So you really want to, it's a bit too much. You really want to just get it as nice and pot as possible. It's really important. You can sit there when it's really, really hot and the river's really warm. I like to sit for about a minute get it really cold. All right, let's check it. Yep, nearly rock hard. Right, I really want it over there. So, wish me luck. Oh, that's a bit far. No, it's... Yeah, it's a bit far again, but it's right on that edge. It's not, it's not too far away from where I was, where I used to go, so. A few meters, that's all. Camping and Caravan Club, gorgeous site that is. Absolutely pristine site. Really, really, uh, what's the word? The management side of things, oh, dearie me, hot or what? If you obey the rules, then it's all good, isn't it? If you obey the rules, it's fine. If you don't, then you deserve it. Can't blame them. They run it well, and they want to keep it like that. Oh, and everything on site. Oh, so clean. Wow. You know, everything. If you want to take a family camping, uh, you know, it's a lovely spot to do it. Absolutely lovely. Clean as anything. Bathrooms, you know, showers, uh, the washing areas, washing up areas, that type of thing are absolutely lovely. Always are pristine and the grounds itself immaculate and lovely staff lovely staff come on fishies come on i want to show you a fish i want you to see a barbel come on come on come on a barbel or a little carp will do just a little carp four pounder five pound will that do five pound would do nicely sitting a lot better now aren't we since i tied it around the oar it's made the line a lot better
Oh, let's have another quick close up of the weir. We've got the Canada geese there. See canoeists there sometimes when it's in flood. Really, really mad, most of them. Uh, kayakers, sorry. You know those little short kayakers? Crazy doing all their tricks and stuff on the weir. And that gushing water. But what a lovely spot, 15 quid. I know my website, I know my YouTube channel's like mainly for freshwater fishing, free fishing, parking, good access. I don't know how many times I said that, but um, it's, I mean, it's still free fishing. I've paid 15 quid for the week to have the boat on the water with a river license from the lock keeper. Um, that's it, I haven't paid for parking. It's, I think it's something to do with the Magna Carta. Um, uh, you know, how was it in 14, whatever, I can't remember. King something or rather said, this is for the people or something and uh, part of the Magna Carta. This, the Thames access, you know, for it to be free, that type of thing. It's getting worse though, as per usual, local councils. I think they know best, normally ruin everything, so biggest participation sport in the world and football's got nothing on fishing when it comes to participation people play uh, do a lot more fishing themselves than actually play football so and you don't they don't earn money while you're watching it on telly apart from adverts but so we do quite a lot for the economy really you know can't remember what it was it was huge in the 80s and 90s it was amazing the economy, the, the amount of money fishing used to put into the economy, freshwater fishing with the licenses. But nowadays the money doesn't really go as far. So, and of course, the environment agency struggles all the time because they don't really get much handout from the government, which to me is just stupid. A bit like the RNLI. Why the hell don't the RNLI, why isn't that paid for by the government? Why isn't it paid for? You have to rely on volunteers, amazing people. It's crazy, 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 crazy. Oh, we've drifted down quite a long way. I am letting line out, so we haven't moved the line too much. But I think I still need to get up there a little bit further. What I might do is actually go up to the kayak, canoe, small boat um, pass passage, I think. What would you call that? It's the steps that they've got behind me. <laughs> I might pull up to the right hand side of there and um, have a little go in the hole. Come on, I want my rod to go like that. But viciously. <laughs> Come on, I need to catch a fish. I have to catch a fish. Oh, first day. I shouldn't really be so keen, should I? There's the road to Laham. I've done a video on Laham actually. It uh, pretty much starts under that bridge that you can see the motorway bridge there. Is that the M3? I think it's the M3. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, there's some parking under that bridge and it go, there's a lot of fishing down that way, up that way I should say, it's upstream. Lots of free fishing. I, like I said, I've done a video on that uh, in my free fishing playlist with lots of detail. Um, nice spot. Uh, can be a bit rough sometimes with people, certain people don't care, you know. Yeah, so I'm going to move, I want to sort of get up onto that front edge of the sandbar. So what I'll probably do is scoot over to there actually. Yeah, I'll scoot over to the, that, the stepped area just there, tie up and uh, have a little cast just inside the weir pool so we can winkle something out that way and maybe come back to this spot in a bit it's half five now i've got to go by half seven it's my first time i don't know how long it's going to take me to pack up and get back to the site so half seven half eight half nine gives me two and a half hours to get back because it shuts at 10 so you can't go in and out after 10 p.m and i want to obviously i need to get back so i can eat because i haven't had anything to eat today so need to do that so I'm gonna give myself a couple of hours really for that 
Uh oh, looks like it might absolutely pee down in a minute. Which wouldn't be good. It'd be really bad. I don't want rain. Don't want rain, not today. Last day, fine. Not the first day. I see lots of people over the years fishing on the Thames here on the non-tidal side of things between, well, just below Staines Bridge really, I suppose you'd call it. That's where most of the free fishing starts, sort of down to the tidal stretch and that. And so many people have used so many different techniques, meatballs, uh, fruity boilies, fishy boilies, paste, um, throwing lots of bait in, boilies, that type of thing, ground bait. Um, don't see much ground bait going in, but um, yeah, and for me, I've tried everything and I've always come up trumps with this method. So I don't know what it is. Don't know what it is. Just like it. I was hoping that the paste would still be on there when I reeled in last time, but I got this feeling it's just a bit too soft, so I will have to cast a bit more regularly, I think. Yeah, let's give it one more go. If I reel in really gently, see if the paste is still on. I can feel a bit of paste on there. It's probably around the weight, not the bait. Really slowly, really slowly. Oh, just a little, yeah, see, that's perfect. I could have left that another 10 minutes and that would have been fine. Back to the old trick again. Leaving the hook a bit bare this time, a bit uncovered. Get the top of that, remember, nice and hard. And, in, and central, because that's the first bit to hit the water there. There we go. Remember, pack it in as much as you can. Gets to a point where you go around in circles and you don't really do anything. So you just got to get it nice and central, nice and rounded. Give it a dunk. I've always, I've always been tempted here. You can see the foam that's coming off the weir it goes round and round and round like that hits the bank and it speeds up all the way along there. there's an undercut all the way along the bank there that's why it's so so deep really deep in front and you think oh you know that could be quite a nice place for a barbel right on that crease where the foam stops and you've got the slightly slower water and that i fished there never caught a thing as soon as you bring it into the deep water you catch your bream and then you come out 10, 15 metres from the bank and you're up on the plateau slightly and that's where you get your barbel. For some reason, I don't know whether it's the bottom, it's really rocky, big boulders and God knows what, lots of rubbish obviously that gets swept down, floats down, gets caught up, waterlogged and slowly sinks. So there's a lot of stuff there which you think would be really good for carp but never had a thing out of there like that. It's always been the really deep water, right, right in the undercut by the edge, or in the sort of plateau, you know, slightly, slightly slower. Might have had a little nibble then. There's a bite. I'm in. I'm in. I think it's a bream. I think it's a bream. Yeah, it's got to be a bream, isn't it? It's not doing a thing. But hey, I don't mind. Oh, I'm actually not sure now saying that. It's pulling the boat. Oh, that's oh, got to be a bream. Surely. That's not. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> it is, it's a clonker. <laughs> right, 
Oh, I'm not getting that neck cut, mucky. There we go, let's go for that net. Look at the state of it, the way they come in. But, when they're that size, you don't really care, do you? Oh, typical Thames bream, that is. Yay! <laughs> oh, I'm well chuffed. Oh, it's been a while, can't even remember how to hold them. <laughs> right, here we go. Good thing about crushing barbs down. There's your problem, gone. Right, smelly old thing. Whoa, whoa. Are we ready for this, chaps? Ladies and gentlemen, sorry. My Mucker 671's first fish on camera. Whoa, whoa. Steady. I'm gonna need to hose myself off later. There we go, River Bream, a real old warrior, blind in one eye by the looks of things. Looks, got, looks like it's got cataracts. What a stinky old thing. Amazing. Uh, yeah, okay. I slip him back. Lovely yuck. There you go. Lovely yuck. That doesn't even make sense, does it? But oh god, that's disgusting. So much slime. <laughs> but I've caught a fush. Look at the slime. My god. All right, let's go again. <laughs> Let's try again. Ugh, look at that. Oh, that's something I don't, don't like, you know. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> hey, I caught, that's all that matters. I caught a fush on camera for you guys and girls, and I'm chuffed to bits. <laughs> I thought I had a bite, you know, I thought I had a bite earlier. A little nibble. Of course, I'm not using really sensitive gear, am I? I mean, I'm using a small bloody 10 ounce lure rod, you know, but, but you sort of have to on these boats, you know? Oh. You know, I'm camping. <laughs> I haven't got a hose pipe. I suppose I could go down to the main water place and stand in the campsite and hose myself down. Because that's just disgusting, isn't it? Oh, God. What a mess. Oh, that was probably the slimiest bream I've ever caught, I think. Let's pop that in a moment. I'll sort my back out. Oh, I'm still better than sitting on the bank, got to be honest with you. Oh, I haven't had to dr drag any tackle down the river bank or anything, or walk miles. I literally opened the boot, pulled the boat out, stick a couple of bits on it. And Bob's your uncle and all that. <laughs> So the paste works. I'll show, I'll do a video when I'm at the campsite of that, of how I made my paste. I've actually bought a coffee grinder with me as well and some extra high oil, oil trout pellets. This is my little speed controller that I use and it's just a twiddle, I won't do it because it's always on, but it's a twiddle left to go back, twiddle right to go forwards. That's it really, real simple. 60 amp hour battery uh, by Belly Boots Tuning. So Belly, belly Boat spelt uh, belly B double O T tuning uh, uh, from the Netherlands and also the 12 BB belly boat itself from the Netherlands as well. 12 BB EU. You can see what I mean by the bait lasting a long time. I mean, this bait's soft, so it's, I've had to recast quite often already. Uh, mind you, I've only done three or three casts, I think, three or four at the most. Um, but if it's if I hadn't have had to freeze it and with the cancellations, this stuff would have been on. That would last me three days fishing, two days, three days fishing. And what's that, a pint and a half trout pellet, maybe two at the most. No, not even two pints of trout pellet, about a pint and a half of trout pellet and about a little bit, a handful of ground bait. 
I'll probably use, if I don't lose any rigs, I'll probably use about 10 boilies <laughs> as hook bait, maybe 15 by the end of the week. No more than that. So all I've paid for is a couple of days of trout pellet. So if you times that by, let's say four trips, you're talking, wow, well, you're talking, I mean, fishing for a tenner, isn't it? All the bait, all of the bait for a tenner. I mean, you can't beat that, can you? You don't need to traipse down the bank with all the big buckets of bait and the bags of boilies or anything. It's just a little bit of paste, a few, few. I even put my boilie stops in here sometimes. I'm starting to shake when I'm a bit cold. Well, yeah, I even put my boilie stops into here. Put boilie stops, bits and pieces, all I need, and you can go with just a bait box and catch huge fish and lots of them. I think I just had a bite. Did I have a bite? Don't know. Maybe not. Right, I'm gonna put my coat on because I'm cold. All it is is a little throw that I use, a little cagoule type of thing. It's called by Vass, it's made by Vass, so it's completely waterproof. It's actually, what are they called? Uh, water repellent, so uh, not agrophobic, um, oh, hydrophobic. So it's very thin, completely waterproof, completely windproof, so just right for the belly boat really, to be honest. The only thing is, I don't wanna put it onto all this crap, but I'm gonna have to. Right, camera down for a minute. Right, I think what I might do, because, you know, I haven't had a barbel or a, I haven't had a hard hit or a pluck or anything like that. It's just that sick looking bream. So I'm thinking I'm gonna try maybe whizzling around a bit. That's not even a word, but whatever. Uh, if I now go back like this, because I said earlier, I wanted to try the, oh, the deep bit. Well, that's right to my, just to my left. There we go. Right, let's try this now. Okay, like I said, I don't mind moving about with, on the River Thames, it's always worth doing. I mean, I don't do it too quickly, but you know. I would like to have seen a sign of something there, other than a bream. It's the first day, so I'm gonna do it anyway, aren't I? Not settled or anything. I bought too much stuff with me, to be honest with you. Way too much tackle, so when I get back, I'll be thinning that down, because it's the first time I've been freshwater fishing in this. It's normally sea fishing, isn't it, that I do, so. I went out seven miles out to see on a lighthouse uh, called the Nab Tower, uh, abandoned at sea by my mates. It was amazing deep sea fishing in this. Seven miles out with ferries going past. <laughs> Lovely. Caught a few. Had a really good dive that day, actually, Pete did. He um, had some lobster and crab. Got all that on video as well on the same day. Did a video of that. Did a separate video of the second dive of the day but I added that parts of that dive to the actual video, you know? So it was quite nice to see what I was fishing over, literally, all the concrete and rebar and all the stuff that's fallen off the lighthouse over the years where it's been refurbished, that type of thing. So if you wanna see that, it's called, oh, I don't know what it's called, can't remember the title now. Abandoned at seven miles out, abandoned at sea or something. But uh, that's in my belly boat fishing, no, Belly boat sea fishing, I think it is, sea fishing fun playlist. Just click on my little picture of me holding a barbel. And that little the little tile there or whatever thumbnail, whatever you want to call it. And um it'll take you straight to it. In fact I could leave a link, maybe leave a link at the end for that. Definitely worth a watch. Alright now I can see the bar. I don't, I don't know if he's going to get angry with me, but he may very well, but it, it is what it is. That's about right, just on the edge of the bar. Just touch bottom. Lovely. That's the spot right there. A 
that's not good. Windy. Oh, tight. If I can get back here, that would be great. Really don't like the thorns. Ouch. Bloody hell. Things we do to go fishing. I didn't realise it was a blood sport for the person fishing. Oh. I hope you can hear me all right, probably. Pretty noisy. Not as bad as the NAB tower though. <laughs> oh, when I did that lighthouse out at sea, oh my God. Every two minutes, I think it was, every two minutes, something like that, every three minutes, you get these two beeps. Oh, they're so loud. Proper high-pitched foghorn. And that was constant for like, oh, I don't know how many hours. In the end, I did six, I, I edited nearly 6,000 bleeps, I think it was, might have been five. No, I think it was nearly 6,000 bleeps I had to sort of knock the volume down on. I was, it took me two weeks to do that video. It gave me bloody nightmares, it did. Beep, beep, and I'm right underneath it, you know. I mean, deafening. <laughs> Ouch, ouch. Get rid of that bit. Dunk my bait for a bit. Let the fats in the trout pellet, in the high oil, the, the oils I should say, in the trout pellet. Let them get nice and cold in the water again and go hard. Right, this is the spot. Normally, it may have changed with a load of crap in there, but a bit too far? Yeah, too far. Damn. Not quite right. See, all the paste has come off again already. It's just, ugh, it's just too soft. First day, remember, first day. I'll give myself a little bit of grace. I won't use that. Ex I won't use that excuse tomorrow. I promise. <coughs> Excuse me. I found a few more spots actually for uh, free fishing because I don't live here. I don't, it's like I live near Portsmouth, so it's <laughs> it's quite a trek for me to get here and back. Um, but I've been looking on google maps that type of thing having a good bit of research i found a two or three more nice little actually three or four nice little spots to try but so they'll be coming out at some point slightly further up towards stains way you know that sort of area one of them very good blue badge fishing apparently very good blue badge fishing so I hope it isn't too noisy for you. I mean, it's not going to be great listening, but you know, if I can winkle something out from here, all the all the better. You know, turn the volume down for a bit <laughs> till I get one. Tell you what, this weir has changed so much. There's so much more build up close in here. I mean, there was a, a hole that was 10 foot deep just here. Oh, that's me. Wow, this weir, weir pool has changed really changed wow pace is a bit better now though look it's staying on quite nicely this is my second cast now and it's quite hard where it's been in the water 
So that's a good thing. Right, so I'm just gonna take it away from the weir. I can't believe how much this weir has changed. It's frightening. It's unbelievable. There we go. Bit more depth there, that'll work. Well, it's half past six now already. So I've been here, oh, two, two hours, I think, something like that. It goes so quickly. Might be about three hours actually, but now oh, of course I had to pay for the lock and uh, for the river license that took a long time and uh, a few other bits and pieces. I say it took a long time, it was all my fault. I turn up in a belly boat that I can't actually get out of in deep water. You've got to be able to stand up to get out of it, you know, unless you've got a very low platform or something. But um, the lovely lady at the lock run around for me. Can't believe it. I apologise twice. <laughs> So hopefully tomorrow, if I'm physically able, or maybe the next day, I'm going to uh, go, I might come back here, or I might go to Shepparton, Shepparton Weir. I'm gonna come back here, I think. I'm not sure, can't promise it. No, I am, I'm coming back here. So I'll do this and I'm gonna do Shepparton. Um, I thought about doing Layham, which is just up here, but Mm, you could do with a lot of water really for that it needs to be higher river levels really um, where else could we go I've got the this oh Sunbury lot and Sunbury weir now there's a thought I might just do that old bathing station car park is where I'll be going oh wind's got me yeah old bathing station car park that's one of the areas that's fairly close to Sunbury Weir, but um, the actual weir itself, I just don't know. Um, there's another spot down below it that I'd have to motor up, but it's, I've looked on Google Maps and it's about, was 0.8 of a mile, 0.9 of a mile upstream or something. So for me to go upstream like that, I mean, I can do it. Just gotta be careful, that's all. I'm facing backwards, you know, so. But it is a nice spot and it's only a short run busy bit where the boats have been and then it's completely dead like again because it's a weir pool so there's no real boat traffic once you're there so i don't know <coughs> yeah i can't believe how much this has changed here last time i was here in a blow up dinghy the water was to here okay and it was about a foot deep you could stand up with just wellies on pretty much. Pure sand and it's completely disappeared. I've got about a metre of depth. Nah, yeah, nearly a metre of depth under me now. And it's shallower almost there than it is here now. So I'm just gonna have to get my head around this base again. By the way, if you're enjoying a video, if you don't mind hitting the like button, that would help so much the channel would really, 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 really benefit from it. It's so difficult to break YouTube as such, the algorithm that runs it, because there's so many millions of videos uploaded each day, it can't be run by a human being. So it has to be run by um, algorithms, so sort of AI and that type of thing. Um, so if you like if there's a lot of interactions on the channel the video might be really rubbish but if you if you get a lot of reaction to it you still get pushed up in the sort of your recommendations so when somebody posts a video you've got more chance of it being put up there but the best way to do that really is just to hit the like button you know so i would dearly love you to do that if you could oh and i'm nearly at, at 2000 subscribers nearly at 2000 at this point in time on this day uh 2024 something august <laughs> um i'm on 1990 i think or something close to that 92 something like that 
So hopefully when I get home, I'll have hit the 2,000 subscribers, which would be lovely. I'm hoping to meet one of my subscribers actually um, towards the end of the week down here. That would be nice. I'd like to pick his brains actually, yeah. Oh, Smithy, yeah. I'd like to pick his brains. He's fairly local to here, I think, and he knows quite a bit. So, yeah. Never say no to help, you know. Right, I'm really disappointed that this is so shallow. So I've got this horrible feeling, I'm gonna have to move again. I'm all right where I am there, but the drop off seems to be around here. So it's shallow now here, so this hole has gone. So the sort of holes migrated over there a bit, but obviously it's a different bottom there, so it probably won't fish as well. You wouldn't think a little hole that's one, two, three, Four, four, five meters by five meters square, five by, no, five by three meters square, could do so many fish, but it does, it did. But it's not there now, so this cast is all um, new to me. I'll give it a little bit longer here. Not a lot though. <laughs> And then I might mosey on back to my, excuse me, original spot for the last half an hour. Right, well, we're not doing very well here, are we? So uh, I think I'm gonna move again. Let's move again. Uh, bah, bah, bah. I think I'm gonna go back to my normal spot. So the original spot. Be a bit quieter as well, because this is too noisy the camera anyway <laughs> right then here we go let's try another move let's get back out there again and see what happens I suppose wow that's so deep here look at that it's over a meter deep it's a meter and a half deep here now it used to be a, sh a really shallow sandbar my word let's just get out in the flow and it will take me there because my arms are killing me so I'm not going to be rowing. Ugh. There we go. Oh. Why make it difficult for yourself, eh? <laughs> Very shallow here. I can see the bottom just there. Let's hopefully I see my anchor going out. Should swing across nicely. Oh, here are the brave people I was talking about before, the canoeists, uh, kayakers. Absolutely mad. Although the river not being in flood doesn't really help their situation. But if they come down, they're probably going to get onto this um, that jet, uh, jet of water, you know, from the sluice. So you might see a little bit of action there. If you do, I'll try and get a bit closer and do a bit of filming if you like. That'd be pretty cool. Something to see. Okay. I've only got about half hour left. I can't believe how quickly the time's gone. Uh, now I'm set up, I'm gonna get a full day. Tomorrow, well, I don't know about tomorrow. I'm gonna give my back a break, but maybe the next day and I'm gonna get the full day out of it if I can. I've got a nice spot over there I can lie down on. So after a couple of three hours, I have to get out. Oh, three hours if I'm lucky. That's why I like it in the shallow here because with the belly boat, you can just stand up. So literally, I just stand up and the boat doesn't go anywhere because you're trapped inside this gap here. So you can just stand up and sort your back out, you know. So I'll be doing plenty of that tomorrow and the next day, uh, next few days. But I'll get as much filming done as possible because I'm not going to get back down here again for another month. And then that'll be my last time. So it'll only be twice this year. I'll be able to get down to the Thames to fish. I say that. You never know. You never know. Yeah, so I will be moving shortly, I think. Um, I'm, it's seven, gone seven now, just gone seven actually. So I reckon half seven, 
half eight. I'll be back at the car and packed easily away. Back at the campsite for nine, so I'm gonna give myself an hour. An hour's grace, because the campsite shuts at 10, as I said earlier. So let's see these people in their kayaks. Hope I don't, I'm watching me rod. warming up while they warm up I'm gonna change my battery okay so I've changed my battery uh, for the second time now it's got the kayakers here they're limbering up which is always a good sign it means they're gonna go and do something silly <laughs> so fingers crossed they'll go over into that little pool over there you know and I'll put the motor on and go for a little wander and see if we can film them more interested than me fishing way more interesting than me fishing <laughs> at the moment anyway okay I'm going to reel in and do a little bit of filming for you. Let's do it. Right, you can see the bottom now. So this bar, look, that's how deep it is. There you go. That's how deep it is. And this bar was over there. As far as I remember. <laughs> wow. So, let's scoot on out over there. I haven't got anything in the water, have I? Go in um, quick last spot just in the edge of the current, and then I better make a move because it's getting late. It comes a shallow bit. I don't know if you can see the bottom there. <laughs> It's about, I don't know if you can see the bottom, it's about a foot and a half, two foot deep max. So it's really shifted. That's so crazy. Right, I'm really get, I'm getting the hang of this a bit more now with where I am and what I'm doing. So I can sort of see the terrain where it's changed. Yeah, I mean, I can put my foot down now. I can stand up. Shall I stand up? Ugh. Oh, my back. Oh. Oh, look at that. Stood out in the middle middle of the River Thames. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Don't know what to say, really. I can't believe I've done it. Can't believe it. <laughs> if I look over now, whoa. You can see where I'm, you can see what I'm fishing into. Gravel bottom, can you see? I'd imagine there's swan mussels, all sorts of different things in there. So lovely clean bottom. That's what she said again. I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm just walking in the River Thames. It's getting deeper. So this is where the shelf is. Right, okay. This is making sense. So the shelf's moved. So it's deeper further out. So the, the actual bar has decreased. I reckon this bar must have gone maybe a third smaller. Something like that, I would imagine. Something like that. Huh, right, okay. Let's keep going. Right, over this way, he says. Right turn, Clyde. <laughs> like I say, we ain't got long. We ain't got long at all, so. Right, actually, let me check the time. <gasps> I 
Right, okay. Oh, really, I really think I ought to, look, ought to go. Yeah, I'm going, I just have to go because it's the first time I've done this, so I don't know about timing. I do apologize about this, finishing it a little bit earlier, but I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna get back here and I'm gonna stand up and fish a bit tomorrow on the old bar, but I now I know roughly where it is now. <laughs> We should be all right, I think. So, yeah, okay. Let's be a good lad. Let's undo everything, pack it away before we get to shore. So I don't have a fight with a hedge or anything else. That's the other good thing. Enough space to put all your... <laughs> Look, that's all the tackle I really needed, isn't it? <laughs> Didn't need much else. Watch where I'm going, because sometimes you end up back in the middle of the weir pool where you go around in a big circle, so we don't want to do that. Sorry it wasn't longer. Sorry it wasn't longer, but I don't, I just don't, I just need to get back to the campsite. I need to work things out see how long things take because I don't want to get caught out and have to sleep in the wagon outside the campsite tonight you know it's not what I'm planning on doing anyway one last look at the weir I promise you I'll be back here and I'll be really taking it seriously next time so and I'll have a good day like I say this is just a test run so I've learned a couple of bits so let's go for a little bit of a journey. There's the lock. I paid for my ticket, met the lovely lady. All the lock keepers are nice, well most of them are, I haven't met all of them, but they're all bloody lovely as far as I'm concerned. Oh, I'll let you know that is a peachy spot for a car, isn't it? Oh, do you know, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. I'm going to have a look at that. I'm definitely having a look at that. Look at this. Plenty of depth. Plenty of depth. Oh. Oh, do you know, I always want to go back and get some boilies and throw half a kilo under these bushes. <laughs> no. Do you know what I might do? If I get, oh, crikey, if I get back here tomorrow, well, the next next time I come here in the next few days, I'm going to stick a load of boilies under this edge, under these trees. Just going to put a line of them, just going to scatter them. I might even get a float because there's hardly any, do you know, I think I might float fish for some carp and chub. Let's see. I mean, that looks perfect, doesn't it? Oh, it's my next mission. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> Let's get a bit closer. Oh, wow. It's so much depth. Like I say, this whole area along this bank here is really deep compared to most of it, actually, this sort of area. Wow. That is a spot I'm going to have to put some boilies in. And I'll maybe I'll tie up to a tree if I tie up to one of these trees here that'll do it just a rope off just dr gently drop back oh too much dreaming I've got to get home <laughs> oh I like that little gap there as well lemonade <laughs> no not doing it not today 
And this is the island suite, uh, island section, like I said, from the caravan club, camping and caravan club, sorry. If you look at that. Can you see the steps? Oh, they've collapsed quite a lot more than the last time I was here. Wow. So they've collapsed quite a lot, but still plenty of room, isn't there? And he's still got a little, oh. Oh, don't tell me they blocked the access off. <sighs> Gosh, yeah, nothing's ever happened there probably. Never anybody hurt, injured or killed or anything. And yet, yeah, typical English things, they have to put a warning up. It's like, oh gosh, does your head in, doesn't it? It's like we're grown-ups, do you know what I mean? You lose, you have an accident or something, then it's really surely it's down to the ownership of the person themselves, so. Come on, I'll be back for that spot. So all of this is new builds. I say new, it's not that new, but they're, you know, they're, was it last 10 years or so, I think? Might be a bit more than that now. But there's so many new builds like this now. It's just unbelievable. There's no parking anywhere, you know? Just no parking, no access, council blocking everything off constantly. Oh. Why am I moaning? Look at me. Well, I'm an old moaner, aren't I? Tell me if I am in the comments, what do you think? Out of 10, how much do I moan? Well, how much do I moan and mean it? <laughs> That's more to the point. Right, I'm gonna wait for this lady to go. I'm not gonna film her, so. Going in. Uh, so a quick Yui, quick spinny roundy, just to show you something here. So I've done a video, like I say, of all this beautiful stretch along here. It's absolutely gorgeous. In fact, do you know what? Seeing as I haven't done much fishing, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna show you just a little bit of this very quick. I'm just gonna burn my way down here quickly. You have a look at some of these swims, they're beautiful. Really renowned for roach on that bend as well. So let's see. <laughs> quack, quack. <laughs> quack, quack. <laughs> Have a look at this. It's absolutely lovely it is. This whole area. This bit down here. Go over to the other side of the river. Just this bend here. So I've walked, I've filmed all of this all the way along here. There's some beautiful swims, like I say. Um, goes goes on for ages, and there's another car park just behind those trees there, which is a bit of a walk. But it is a lovely spot in the summer, especially. It's lovely, nice. But all this new builds, it's taken away all the parking, all the access to just about everything now. So, which is nice of them, isn't it? Right, right turn Clyde, foot in. There's, the, I can't remember the name of the little marina there, but you've got the marina there, and you've got another free fishing area. See the tables and chairs. That's where you can free fish. There's parking there, there's two sets of parking. You can get to there. I've never filmed them, because they're a long way away, and my, my sort of videos are more about easy parking and access as much as possible. I do do the odd one that isn't quite so easy, but, you know. Better look behind me, I suppose, really. Oh. <coughs> oh, <no. laughs> All right. <laughs> well, on that note, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry I only caught a bream, but what can you do? Um, yeah, get better, that's what I can do. Oh. 
This is where I don't want to get off the boat now. It's like going back to reality. Life as we know it. London. Ugh. I do like London actually. I love London. It's just some people aren't so nice. <laughs> Uh, well, I've babbled a lot, haven't I, today? I do apologise about that. Only caught one bream, but there will be more coming, like I say. So keep your eyes open. Don't forget to hit the like, the subscribe, the notification bell. It's free to subscribe. It's just like adding me to your favourites, that's all. If you sign in with your Google account. And, um, well, I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you very much for watching.